G'day everybody, thanks for joining us again. We're doing another lesson in JavaScript through Minecraft, uh, targeted towards year seven and eight students. Uh, thanks for all the feedback for the last day or so. It's been really nice seeing those things coming through. Um, today what we're gonna be doing is working on some events and triggers, okay? So an event in coding is what happens to cause something else to happen, okay? Typically this predates a condition. So if you open the door, to get through the door you have to open it first okay or if it starts to rain you're going to put up an umbrella okay the event starts something okay and the code then executes the instruction for you okay so we're going to jump right on in and i'm going to start with some different events that you probably haven't seen yet you might have played with them a little bit but we're going to start using some different ones okay so there's lots of different events available uh, this first one today this is going to be called the yellow brick road Okay, this is a, a, a lot, lot of fun for this one as well. Click on JavaScript only and we'll start creating our new world. All right, once again, I'll give myself some nice big space so I've got lots of code areas to work in. Okay, this time we're going to be looking at a few different things. Up to this point, we've always been looking at this run code on chat command. So that was our original event. When we type in that instruction into the chat window, that was the event. Okay, it triggered the instructions of, our, of the rest of our code. But today, that's not what we're going to be doing. We're going to be looking at a different one, okay? And this one's going to be a run code on player method, okay? A method is sort of like an action, okay? Or what some, something that needs to happen, okay? So right now, this is what we're going to do. We're going to be doing an on-traveled event, okay? Now, as I type it in, you'll see that I've got a few events starting to pop up, on-traveled, on-died, on-item, on-chat, okay? As I said before, we're going to be using the on-traveled event, Okay, now as I tab across, it starts to populate with some of the arguments that I need for this work today. Okay, you can see that we've got walk, that's the default argument, but it doesn't have to be walk, you can type in fly, you can type in sneak, and you can do lots of different things. We are, for now, going to start just with walk, and then we're going to give some more code to give us our extra space to do that. Okay, so we're going to start, we're going to scaffold this task a little bit today. We're going to have a number of different activities. I'm going to delete the code, I'm going to modify it and delete it, and I'm going to add more stuff to it again. I'm trying to make some really dynamic looking things at the end of it. Okay, so our first one is every time we walk, that is now the event. So every time our code now has to execute when we're walking around in Minecraft. All right, and the code that we actually want to do is we want to use our block place command. Okay, so we're going to go block, oh, we don't want uppercase, sorry, we want lowercase, blocks.place, okay, and as I tab across, you'll see grass and position. Okay, so where do we want to place it and what is it that we want to place? Now, we're going to start with something very basic. We don't want to place grass because we're already standing on the grass, so that's a, going to look a little boring. What we actually want to do is we want to place some nice pretty flowers around us. Okay, so every time we trigger this on-traveled walk event, it's going to place a block right at that position, okay? So um, I'm going to click play now, okay, which is down in the bottom right. You can see that. I'm going to move around. You can see I've got a nice big empty space again at the moment. Now I'm going to press a different button because every time I walk forward, you can't really see yourself. So if you hit F5 on your keyboard, it's actually going to change your view. So you can change the different perspectives of your character. Okay, right now we want that. And as you can see, every time I walk, I'm now creating little flowers as I move through. Okay, I can draw, I can create these little characters. Okay, so that's a very simple one to start with. But I don't want to make this the only thing that we're doing. It's an event. Every time I walk, it's placing a new piece of code. I want to make it so we're going to actually create a yellow brick road. Okay, so instead of a yellow flower, we're actually going to change that from the yellow flower into what we call a gold brick. Okay, oops, gold, I uh, beg your pardon, gold block. Okay, now I don't want it to be a gold block at the place that I'm standing at, okay, because if, if I run it like that, it's going to look like this. Okay, you can see as I walk, my blocks appear behind me now. Okay, but if I make it so that the blocks appear one point underneath me, or one block underneath me, then what's going to happen is it's actually going to start to replace the blocks in the grass that I'm walking over the top of. Okay, and so I'm effectively creating a little yellow brick road now. Okay, now what if I want it to be a bit thicker? 
Okay, as you can see, it's a very similar, a very thin or a very narrow looking block. All right, but what if I want it, instead of having one row thick, I actually wanted to make it one block by the side of me as well. So it's a big, nice thicker brick uh, road for us to look at. Okay, so in order to do that, we're actually gonna modify that code a bit and we're not gonna do a block place function anymore. Okay, so what you actually wanna do is we wanna delete this code and we're gonna do a block, oop, uppercase again, sorry, a block dot fill. Okay, now a fill function is actually going to give us, um, sorry, not blocks, blocks.fill. Oop, I'll just get rid of that one. Blocks.fill. Now we're going to fill it with gold blocks again. Okay, and instead of um, filling with just one position, we actually want to make it so that our position occurs on the side of us, in the middle, and on the other side of us. So what we have to do is we have to create a range of areas with which to fill in our blocks. Okay, so in order to do that, we're gonna go position and we're gonna put in the first position. Okay, and we're gonna go minus one, minus one, minus one. And that's gonna be the first range, okay? The beginning of that range. And now we need to create another block range at the bottom of that square as well. Okay, so we're gonna have, oops, I don't want that, I want that. Okay, we want to have the other side of that position. Okay, and that one's going to be from 1 to minus 1 to 1. Okay, now be very careful. I'm going to just put a carriage return in there so you guys can read that a bit easier. So what you should be able to see now is I've got a block filling that's gold. It's going to start at the position that is one place um, to the side of me, one place underneath, and one place behind. And it's going to do it so it's one place to the other side of me, it's going to stay one block below me and it's going to do one in front. So effectively what it's going to do is it's going to create a little grid of blocks right underneath my feet. Okay, so I'm going to hit play again. Now as I walk, what's happening is it's actually creating a little three by three grid for me to walk around on. Okay, and you can see that as I move through, it's got these nice big paths for me to create my yellow brick road. Pretty cool, yeah? All right, so that is the yellow brick road. Now you guys can go and you can modify this code a little bit. It doesn't have to be gold. For instance, if you want to make it so that it happens when you fly, okay, we want to have um, the character moving up into the air. Um, if I pick it up like that, you'll see now I've got my blocks being placed right where I am. Doesn't matter how high I go, I'm effectively creating this nice, beautiful, pretty cool tower. Okay, still got the walk function there too, so that's helpful too. Okay, um, lots of other things you can do with that code, guys. Um, there is a couple of things that people find a little bit tricky uh, doing this code. Um, it can be that you typed in the, the coordinates slightly wrong, so there they are again. Okay, another thing that tends to happen sometimes, and I'll see if I can mimic it now, um, if I just break my way back through this code. Oops. I'll just get rid of my code right now for a second. On travel walk. I'll go back into my code. Let's fall down. Alright, now what you might be able to see now is that looks like I'm walking. Okay? What I'm actually still doing is that I'm actually flying right now. Even if I go a little bit further, I'm actually on the ground right now, but I'm actually still technically flying. Now a lot of students go, it's not working, it's not working, even though it says walk right there. Well, a good way of doing it is just double tap space so it makes sure it actually falls from the sky down to the ground. Now when I walk again, it actually does register as me walking. Okay, so guys, thanks very much for today. Have a good afternoon.